what is up my friends you are very welcome along to tonight's late night agenda now i do apologize for having not uploaded for a couple of days i just needed a bit of space to clear my head refresh and now i'm back and i'm ready to go so tonight's video we're gonna go through and i'm gonna unpack the fernandez situation for you guys everything around enzo fernandez we're gonna look at what liverpool may or may not do in the window and a couple of other bits and pieces as well now if you want more information around why Liverpool will be able to afford two top-notch midfielders, then come over and join me on Twitch tonight. And if you're watching this too late, maybe watch it back over on Twitch because I'm going to break down the finances of this and why Liverpool should be able to make this happen. But you know the drill by now, my friends. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. Please do drop a like on the video. And of course, hit that subscribe button for me. Let's start off with a deal that I do not want to happen from a personal perspective again i understand opinions will vary on this one but i read something today that said that liverpool sporting director julian ward has a very good relationship with bjorn bezemer who is the agent of nabi Keda, and that they're hoping to strike up an agreement on the new deal i don't believe that nabi Keda deserves a new deal at liverpool football club in fact if we do sign him i think it's going to be a mistake and I understand that it could save the club money, but just look at the time he's been at the club. Nobody really has many doubts about the guy's potential as a football player. I think we're almost all unanimously in agreement that Naby Kane is a very good footballer. The problem has been that for whatever reason, be it injury or maybe Jurgen Klopp just not feeling like he's in the right moment in the right rhythm whatever he hasn't played anywhere near enough. So for me, I'd like to draw a line under it and move on. I don't like Klopp showing faith in players that quite simply just haven't repaid that faith. So that's where I sit on the whole Naby Keita situation. But I understand other people's opinions may differ. A little bit on Jude Bellingham and just a really quick bit because I've seen an article today that said that Manchester City are hoping that maybe his relationship with Erling Haaland could be a factor in his decision making. It won't be him, his representatives and I believe his family all very much want Jude Bellingham to make Liverpool his next destination. Obviously, the fee has to be agreed between the clubs. Again, if you want to find out how that will make sense financially, do come and join me on Twitch tonight and I'll talk you through it. But I reached out to my guy again and nothing has changed. The, the family seem to want that next step in his career to be at Liverpool. There was many articles written that his father, Mark, R is... is feeling that Liverpool's the best fit. Just like I've said all along, we are actually the best fit. This isn't just me trying to make this fit. He is ideal for Liverpool. Liverpool are ideal for him. So, you know, it'll play itself out. He's going to go and his family and his representatives will talk to Dortmund and we'll see where we are. But I'm sure there's going to be plenty more twists and turns along the way. Right, the next thing I want to speak about is uh, regards to the January window and what we can expect so we know Diaz has unfortunately been ruled out now until March. He underwent surgery on the ligament in his knee. Uh, everything went okay, so that's good news. But it will keep him out until March time. Also, we've got Diogo Jota, who's going to be out until around February time. But if you're looking for a little bit of good news, well, Arthur Mello has been ahead of schedule in his return back from his injury. So maybe that will give Kloppo a bit more breathing room. But I don't know if we're going to do business in january my gut instinct tells me i think that we will but i honestly have no idea who that might be and i'm not going to come on here and tell you i know that amrabat or anybody else is linked to january i don't quite simply what i've read around amrabat is probably what you guys have read the fiorentina just don't want to sell them in january but in the summertime maybe things will be different so again it's not fantastic news but it's honestly and that's what i've always tried to bring to you guys now we move on to one more quick transfer story before it gets stuck into the Enzo Fernandez situation. So today, Gazetta della Sport, I think it is, or Gazetta Italia, uh, I'm taking this from Anfield Edition, by the way. I always like to credit the accounts that I, that I use for these bits of information. So they've posted, Liverpool are in the running for Napoli forward, Herving Lozano, with the Italian club unwilling to renew his contract due to his huge wages. They would hope to recoup most of the 36 million they paid for his services back in 2019 and are keen to cash in soon. Now, I don't believe this story. Again, not that I don't believe that it's written. I mean, I just don't believe it because Lozano is one of those names that every transfer window seems to pop up in and around Liverpool Football Club. And I don't think there's any truth to it. So that's my quick take on that one. But look, I do want to finish up tonight with the main story of the day. And that is the Enzo Fernandez situation. From my understanding, 
there is no agreement in place. I know that it's been mentioned that there is an agreement in place between Liverpool and Benfica that will see him move in the summer. From the journalist that I spoke to today, nobody that they or in their circle is aware of this being a done deal. There's interest, there is 100% interest. You can go all the way back to, I think it was Melissa Reddy who first broke the news of Liverpool's interest in Enzo Fernandez. And I'm going back, God, it must be, must be three months ago now that Melissa broke that story. So I'm not trying to say Liverpool aren't interested. What I'm trying to say is I don't want people getting their hopes up about an agreement in place when I don't believe that that agreement is in place. That's kind of where I am with this. Again, I'm not trying to be a doom merchant or anything like that. I hope we sign him. He looks like a very good football player. But from what I understand, there is no agreement in place. It's just a fiction as far as I'm aware. And... You know, I'll let you research it for yourself, but we have looked into this in as much detail as we can. And all we can figure out is that there is interest. You know, will it be a bidding war? I don't know. He's got a fairly hefty buyout clause in his contract. Um, Manchester City, Real Madrid, Liverpool have all been clubs linked with Enzo Fernandez's signature. But as of right now, I can't sit here in good conscience and say that I know Liverpool to be favourites or that Liverpool are close to making this deal happen. I don't. Doesn't mean it won't happen. Again, it's just me being honest and saying, to the best of my knowledge, that agreement does not exist. Now, how much will he cost? That's the $24,000 question, the $64,000 question, excuse me. I don't know. If you want to go from his buyout clause, over 120 billion euro, do I think Liverpool will pay that? Absolutely not. They only paid, if my memory is right, 10 million, I think, when they signed him, Benfica from River Plate. So I don't see uh, I don't see them getting that much of a markup that quickly. He is having a very good World Cup, of course, with Argentina, and I sincerely hope they go on to win it for Leo Messi's sake. But yeah, I'm just trying to I guess I'm just trying to temper expectations because I will speak about why it's possible for Liverpool to spend the money that would be needed to get an Enzo Fernandez, um, a Jude Bellingham or another top-notch midfielder alongside Jude Bellingham. But to break that down properly, I'm going to have to have more time than I've got on this video. So if you do want to catch up with us, come over to the Twitch channel tonight or the next couple of nights where I'll be live. I'll be doing a watch along of both the World Cup semi-finals as well. So if you want to come along and join me for those, I'll be able to give you more information on an individual basis, if you like. So that's pretty much it for me tonight, my friends. I just wanted to, again, thank you for your support over the past few days. It's been a pretty, pretty tough time, but uh, I do apologise for not uploading. I'm back now, and we'll be getting back into our normal rhythm. So I look forward to chatting with you guys in the coming days. I hope you have gotten over the knocking out of England of the World Cup, if you're an England fan. But for the rest of us, well, we've still got two big games to uh, look forward to over the next couple of days in the World Cup. I'm back in. We're going to see an Argentina and France final. But let's be honest, we all want Morocco to get there. Talk to you guys soon. Much love as always. Take care. Bye-bye.